Is that a heart? Some very half-assed sacrifice going on here. Dark Ages Jack the Ripper. Oh. Oh dear god. So it doesn't require sacrifice. When you thought... Wait. Speculation. This this is a djinn, but this is after the fall of the kingdom. Oh. Do it. And if And if Geralt and Yennefer are in the past, do we get the, are we going to get the origins of the Jinn? Oh, for goodness sake, we just got him back! And you're just going to kill him off! What a waste. The dream come true. Oh, she's off the grid. So that means she's run away from the kingdom she served. In any direction, your skills will be rewarded. If it's as you say, then why aren't you out there taking your? Um, yeah, it's very phallic in nature. <coughs> Whoa, medieval Viagra. Better go now, Schnucky. What is this wretched business here? <laughs> Did you not understand the sign? To me. I'd like to see you try. I did suspect you possessed such a predilection. In you on your search. What do you want to do? Well, we know what she's going to do. Or the inevitable outcome. She will find her way to Gerald. There he is. Only one man can sing in this series. Gerald. Hello. What's it been? Months? Years? What is time anyway? I heard you were in town. Are you following me, you scamp? <laughs> hey. You should really think about getting a hobby or anything. What do you think he's doing now? He's fishing. That's a great hobby. How are you doing? Peaceful, yet you get to kill something at the end. The Countess de Stael, my muse, and the embodiment of the soul's desire to grow. Did you sing to her before she left? I did, actually, and she... Why? <laughs> That's mean. Oh, 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 we are so having this conversation. Come on, Geralt, tell me, be honest. How's my singing? Shit! It's like ordering a pie and finding it has no filling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I need a nap. I mean, are you trying to hurt my feelings, Geralt? <laughs> Here it is. If I'm completely honest. Wow. And then you can have your Ginny Gin Gin. Let go. No, no. Ginny Gin Gin. Oh, you fuck. It's a bit of an anticlimax. I have freed thee, and as of this day, I am thy lord. No, no, no. of Sidaris be struck down with apoplexy and die. Touche. I should use that next time. The fuck? <laughs> The fuck? Wait. The fuck? Okay, so I better give a play by play commentary about what's actually happening. The dressing gowns, why are they wearing dressing gowns? Orgies. No. I'm not quite sure what you're trying to get at here, Yennefer. But I'm liking the music. And I'm liking the outfit. And that's an ethereal entrance. Wow. 
<laughs> Your heartbeat is extraordinarily slow. <laughs> Jennifer and Gerald. <laughs> A witcher. Oh, I admit, there is a connection here. I can just feel that. I just... Long enough for you to bathe. Oh! <laughs> safe word, safe word! Right. Magic. Man, I hardly think... You and your kinky fuckery will be done. Kinky fuckery will be taken no more. I can only guess the age and breed of your horse. Well, let's pray for her on our way out of town. Well, that's cool. Do we ever do have an elf, an elf uh, companion? Are you? I know how you feel. Leave the very sexy but insane witch to her inevitable demise. She saved your life, yes, Gare. I can't let her die. That's a pretty accurate description. Insane yet sexy. Don't You're just like greed from Full Metal Alchemist. That's not what you truly want. Wait, they have later hose and, and pants suspenders, but they also wear breeches? Make your whip breeches! He has that. He wants your freedom. It's here. And there it goes. And there it goes. Wait, now that it has no vessel at all. No more havoc than you. And Jin's already it's gone. his job. How can you be so sure? When did you last feel happy when you felt trapped? If you were gonna portal us to safety, you could have taken us out of this shit town. A fine critique if you could make a portal yourself. And it wasn't a shit town, it was a fine town till you came along. <laughs> <laughs> and that was going swimmingly. It was. Like a drowning fish. I'll just leave that for for then, I guess. You always said I had the most wonderful singing voice. Hi without a filling. That's what he said. You're alive. Bollocks. <laughs> I always, I always count on him for the one-liners. Him or Ger or Geralt. <laughs> him or Geralt. I was right about you. You do know. He truly, totally true logic to the wind. There's no planning here. It truly wasn't. Geralt. I don't, don't be sleeping, Mel man. Ah, oh, but he's cured of his insomnia. Emotion. And we're back with Siri for reasons. So a lot to unpack there. So this is sort of a good furthering of the desires of the main characters. Gerald and Yennefer uh, are both well, looking for basically something new in life. It's kind of similar to how last episode was, was tying in the desires to characters to the actual events in the, in, the, in the plot where they are losing something but also gaining something. In this case, they're, they, it's actually pretty cool that they get to unite finally. Fortunately, it was ruined by some marketing for marketing for the actual episode, so that that's disappointing. I knew it was coming, and it's. I thought it was really cool that the. Had the action, the uh, a cool little twist. I think the main thing I liked about this episode was the main thing I liked was 
Yennefer and Gerald's interactions. I, th- I thought they were kind of sweet. They were very, they were very coy and very playful. Uh, and you know, you don't, you don't see that often with Gerald. So it's nice little sides to their characters where they can just be sort of uh, play up their roles a bit less and be more, more than more private with one another. Uh, so I thought, I thought, I thought for certain, like, oh, Gerald, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't sleep right after, you know. Good, nice bit of chat, you know, nice bit of cuddling, maybe afterwards. No, nope, apparently he's finally satiated, and that's quite nice. That I think there's a good, there's actually a solid bond that's now formed between these two. How uh, Jennifer wants to for, forge, forge a, a new way of getting, a, yeah, of conceiving a child. In other words, in a, in a way of finding a family. I think she can find that in in Gerald, in Gerald with. Uh, the fact that they can form a relationship that doesn't have to be bound by blood. It's, a, it's born, it was born in blood anyway, in blood of battle. But it was a good sort of little reprieve on Yennefer's behalf, wherein she can find someone to relate to, find someone to, to emote, emotionally connect with, without having to conceive of a new, of a new child entirely. It's kind of sweet, actually, that Gerald was uh, kind of sweet that Gerald was willing to to fight for Yennefer. I, I there's some apparently there's some speculation about what the last the last wish is. Um, I'm guessing because because it's this sort of trickery with gins, the 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 last wish might actually be a might actually be a case of. Geralt wanted to wish her to wish her to remain alive, you know, live for me or some in some along those lines. But due to gin trickery and the rules that about that are applied, it could be a case where she's actually she's actually um, going to live, but apart from each other, because something's going to drop them apart. I bet you something's going to drop them apart, and it's going to be because of some gin mess messing around earlier in the episode or earlier in the series, but it. For Yennefer to restore her fertility, it's a. I think it's good that the story wants to pull that away, pull away from that. It's it's good that they don't they shouldn't try and bind Yennefer, you know, the, one of the strongest female characters in the show, to I want to have a baby. I mean, everyone had. I mean, you could make an argument that there is a strong paternal instinct. One that once that is taken away from you, once that's been. That's been triggered a few times in the previous episodes, with the death of a baby, with loss of loss of her ability to give birth. That she might be saying, like, you know, I you don't know what you you don't know what you're missing until you, until it's taken away from you. So I need I want to get it back. But I think with this, if it goes this route, um, it, it takes more. It takes more of a Yennefer striving for dreams and desires, and uh, she can have really she can have everything. Now she desires power, but she also wants to wants the child, which which she gave up in order to have power. Also, strike a good balance. Could be a case of true Geralt. She can find means of gaining more power and gaining more influence, and gaining more connections, but also gaining that gaining that emotional connection that can be found with that can be found with a child, or found with a loved one. And Jasker's back. Like love, love me some Jasker. I, I pity the poor man when he gets when he leaves the series forever, and I'm gonna miss him. In, miss him when he's gone. But, uh, if, but uh, I'm glad. I'm glad he was used again. Used in doses. Not he wasn't overused. He wasn't wasn't used to a point where you could start getting annoyed with him. Same, same seems to be applied to Siri for some reason, where she was there for the beginning and then at the end. I thought for sure that the the man who changed his face was like the djinn and he went out and carved the bodies or carved out parts of bodies like a Jack the Ripper type and then he sort of assimilated someone he killed. Then I thought he was he was the djinn assume, assuming the cows, the face of Mastra and you and I thought, oh wow, so that's where the djinn's origin comes from. He he has a hatred of her 
Ger for Geralt and Yennefer, and that's why he's helping these Nilfgaard out. Nope, just a Doppler. Turns out he was a Doppler the whole time. A bit disappointing. You could have. I thought they were going to tie that in together. And as a new notion, a Doppler is that a magical practice, or is that a a species? Like it's sort of like a like a bogart, where you don't know what it actually looks like, but you always know it. It, take, it takes a form. Um, and apparently the jinns are actually a jinn is actually a air based type genie. There's the uh, ones associated with the other elements, but this is like an air based, and you can't really see it. It's like smoke. Look, so it's a pretty cool thing. It's like an ethereal genie. There's no physical manifestation. There's no visual metaphor for it. It's Sorry, no visual rep representation. It's in more of a metaphor. Like everything just happens to move about. You sort of know what your wishes are and speak them aloud. And clever little twist where it reveals that it turns it turns out Geralt can't. Geralt was the one to make the wishes and not, not Yasker. So that's a that's a clever little twist there. So see that like why don't you why don't you just pop? Okay, that's funny. Also, I struggled. I struggled with the at the beginning to remember what those those uh, dwellers within the forest were. I thought they were triffins or triffids or something like that. But that's the that's the uh, creatures from uh, that's the creatures from the day of the triffids, the sci-fi novel. They are actually triads. So I should I should remember that for future. Pity I, I was expecting uh, Siri uh, Siri to stick stay among the triads. That'd be a cool way to sort of explain how she st starts to develop her magic magical prowess. Um, you know, maybe hunting abilities, maybe fighting abilities, hiding in the forest, training with these <laughs> Amazon-like warriors. I'm not even quite sure why we introduced them if they were just only there for like barely an episode or barely two episodes. So, it's, so hopefully they might come back. Maybe they catch up to Siri when they realize, oh wait, that's not that's not the wizard friend who helped her. It's actually a Doppler. Um, I'd say I don't want to say this is the weakest episode, but I know for me this felt like the least impressive because I didn't feel like there was very much of a strategy to defeating the Jin. Um. Everyone else, everywhere else, was just a case of use magic, use specific, uh, specific spells, uh, use a specific approach, like maybe diplomacy, maybe bribe them, maybe um, fight on their behalf because it's something in the wrong that we misinterpreted. Here, it's a case of Jin's happening. You have to deal with Jin. Well, not, not much else to say. I uh, it was a fun episode. Might do it a second watch because a lot of it went right over my head. I just, I just need to remember Nilfgaard and Sentra. Those are the two canons I need to remember. Please subscribe down below and drop drop a like and a comment. And see and to see more, please click on the videos that are in the link right here on the screen. Happy design.